Hey, what up? It's New Age Ja, and I basically want to share a tip for those of my astrology buffs who are seeking to unlock and decode their chart. And um, here's my chart. I really don't care if you can see my information. Fuck it. You no one has permission to go in there and decode anyways, unless you ask me. So any information that you pick up will be inaccurate because we did not discuss you reading into my chart without my permission. But if you'd like to chime in with me, you are more than welcome to. Now I am using my chart as an example because I know how to read my chart. It's what I'm most familiar with. And I know how to read your chart too, if you allow me. But for the sake of giving you a personal lesson where I understand the accuracy of what it is that I'm saying, you can take the same principle and tips and apply them to your chart. So, all right, so I am a Leo rising, all right? With, you see, this is, I'm using whole sign system. I am a Leo rising with a Cancer sign, Mercury, Chiron, Jupiter in the 12th house, all right? Cancer, ruling my 12th house. Cancer is the original ruler of the fourth house. And I have Scorpio there, which is the original ruler of the eighth house. Now, having Scorpio in my fourth house get, has a huge effect on my Cancerian energy. So it's basically like I'm away from home for a little bit. I am visiting the 12th house. Pisces, or let's say I move away from home and I go to a more oceanic um, creative space. But back home, where I come from, is, is scorpionic. It's where I have, you know, any of my taboos, my fears, my transformative stories, any power struggles at home, my psyche. So, you know, at home for me as a child, being a, scorp a cancer son, home for me my domain would be Scorpio, okay? Now, this is all going to tie in. My Leo rising, Leo rising or your rising sign is the doorway to your life path, okay? It's the, where you begin to step in and traverse this world or this life, okay? And going into stepping in as a Leo rising, I immediately encounter, encounter a south node there. And south node is the dissolver. It's a very spiritual sign. It, it dissolves whatever it is touching. It wants to dissolve it and sake for the highest good of your spiritual and soul body, usually um, cutting off and taking away all material and egoic um, qualities that hinder me or you from your ultimate spiritual growth and path. Now, the South Node here dissolving my Leo energy, it's almost, it has a, Nep the South Node K2 has a, a very Neptunian quality to it. And having this Neptunian, it's like having Neptune on in my first house or having Neptune on my rising sign. It's very hard for me to understand exactly how this Leo energy is behaving especially since the Leo energy or the Leo ruler sun is in my 12th house. Some more Pisces, Neptunian, lost, I cannot see energy. And your, the snapshot of your birth chart, the snapshot of your birth chart is exactly a snapshot. It's a key. It's a turn dial. It's a compass. And your original birth chart can be reconfigured in any manner in order to uncode or decode any of the configurations and or houses in your charts, as well as planets. If we wanna understand more how an individual planet is behaving, we bring it to the ascendant. As they say, the sun is your vitality and life force. And to better understand what your core desires are, it's a great idea to put the sun on the rising, 
And for me, that's a really great idea as the sun does rule my arising, so it makes sense. So having cancer in my ascendant un unlocks many things for me. Or putting the moon on my ascendant unlocks how my moon is behaving, my second house is behaving, my 12th house for my sun is behaving. But I really wanted to understand how my Leo energy was going on. What are the keys that I need to understand how to unlock my life path? How is this Leo energy truly functioning? It's a little bit confusing, right? Having it supposedly, you know, dissolved in the 12th house. So what I did here is I took my fifth house cusp, which is ruled by Sagittarius. There's a trine here and put it on my ascendant. So Leo rules the fifth house, right? The sun rules Leo. Leo rules the fifth house. Having Sagittarius here, I want to better understand this Leo energy. So I'm going to go to Leo's home, which is his fifth house, and put it on my ascendant. Boom. Once I put that ascendant, uh, I'm sorry, once I put my fifth house on my ascendant, I was able to better understand what is going on with my Leo or with my rising energy. And what are some of the trips, trip ups with this Leo house, with this fifth house energy? And putting that fifth house Sagittarius on my ascendant, I was able to see exactly what was going on with my Leo. It's intercepted in the eighth house. Look, Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius is intercepted, meaning it doesn't have a house cusp of its own. It's in between the second and the third house kind of in here, right? Smashed into the second house. So second, I mean, Capricorn, Aquarius, no cusp. Pisces has a cusp. Aries, Taurus rules my fifth house cusp and my sixth house cusp. Interesting. Gemini and Cancer and then Leo trapped in the eighth house now if you remember earlier i told i mentioned that the eighth house or scorpio rules my fourth house which is ruling my son my son ruling the ascendant please keep catch up because you can use these same steps to interpret your chart so um which makes perfect sense that my Leo energy is being caught up in the eighth house ruled by Scorpio. Boom. It's caught in the eighth house, which automatic, automatically helps me to understand why is it that my south node on the first house has been affecting me without me truly understanding the karma behind it. An eighth house is all about karma. And having the Leo Aquarius sign intercepted with North and South Node tells me that I have mastered this Leo energy to a fault. I have mastered it to a fault to the point where it's buried and anchored in my eighth house. It doesn't have to rule any of my cusps, although in my present day, it's on my rising because it's a mastered energy that I embody. But there's an issue here in regards to self-esteem and self-worth here and understanding that I am here to achieve material success and possession. And this is mimicked and shown with my Virgo moon in the second house, which gives it or makes it even more so of an emotional and soul need, the moon representing the soul. <coughs> I have an emotional and soul need to um, acquire possession. <laughs> to live a material life that isn't based solely on my spiritual occultic practices as I have mastered the occultic arts in a past life, hence bring, making me or bringing me focus into my 12th house, sorry, bringing focus into my 12th house, dissolution, spirituality, service. I have a... Um, 
a 12th sixth house axis. And this is a Libra um, signature. As you can see, I have no Libra in my third house, no Libra. Venus is unaspected in my 11th and Gemini. Libra energy is missing, but it is not as it is prevalent in my main natal chart. As heavy oppositions like that, oppositions are a Libra aspect. Now look at all of these oppositions have major Libra signature here. Also, as well as the T-square from my Cancer stellium, my Capricorn stellium, and the Mars Aries T-square. Now with the T-square, they always say to look at the opposite end of the apex planet to see what energy needs to be propelled in order to unlock and handle the T-square. What is opposite from Aries, Libra? So although the Libra energy seems to be missing, it is shown prevalent in other ways. Now take a look at when I put the fifth house on my cusp, first house cusp ruler. It puts Libra right on my MC and puts my Libra Venus or my Gemini Venus in my sixth house, echoing the need for service, beauty, Libra relationships. Look at how my stellium goes from the 12th house into the seventh house, Libra signature. The Libra energy is prevalent. So the big, a big part of my karma is focusing on relationships as well as releasing the need to depend on others financially and to depend on others to constantly feed and fuel my ego, hence establishing security, uh, uh, social security, as well as monetary security, as well as self-value and self-worth on my own creating this perfectionist streak. Now, Libra is a perfectionist, Virgo is a perfectionist, Saturn is a perfectionist, and look at this, Venus is a perfectionist in the sixth house. There's a very strong perfectionist energy that needs to be corrected, and that perfectionist energy is actually related, in, in, related to Saturn in my second house, which has put a great, great strain on my self-value or self-worth. Not to say that I don't know what I'm worth and who I am as I do being this Leo, but somehow I am being made to stand on my own two feet without the accolades and or the encouragement of others letting me, leading me to understand what my worth is. Also having the ability to cut off Saturn cut off what does not suit my highest needs. So my North Node goes from being in the sixth house or the seventh house to going into the second house, which is the first step that I need to unlock my destiny yeah. and my path. Unlock my destiny and my path, okay? I need to unlock my self-worth and my self-value and to understand that it is okay for me to pursue material gain and wealth and possession as it is a deep soul need of mine, okay? So understanding that, yes, crisis, occult, mystery, money, other people's money, all that stuff has always come very easily to me and has almost become a crutch. And in this lifetime, I have to remove that crutch, learn how to be self-sustaining. And then after I have um, gain the possessions, the worth, the materials that I need to feel safe in this world, then that in turn can be given and serve and given as a service onto others with this Virgo moon serving others and this 12th house sun. Um, so I mean, I feel like I've come across like a major breakthrough, understanding the South Node Leo and its interception in the eighth house and how some of my core wounds and traumas have been hidden 
or, or some of the keys that I needed in order to unlock my chart were simply revealed by opening the house that rules my ascendant, that rules my chart and my natal chart, okay? So your natal chart is, again, a blueprint and an endless um, pot of possibilities. The only thing is that learning how to maneuver your compass in order to unfold and decode more of the treasures that are available to you. So with that being said, I just wanted to give you this example. Um, now I really understand um, why I have that south node on my rising in Leo as I now understand the interception in the eighth house and bringing my occultic mastery to the forefront, but first placing emphasis on the, my need for material security and, and my need to have um, my finances in order to have my own business, to have my own resources and to um, feed and fuel my own sense of self-worth and value with Taurus in the, sex, in the second house, which can be, can be, be confused for Leo as Leo is more egoic and wants to be praised and wants to be seen. It's more of a superficial accolade versus Taurus in the second house is more physical, more realistic, more long-term. Um, mo there's more value in the second house when you learn to truly value yourself and to remove things that don't suit your highest um, morale, um, which has which is opposite from Leo wanting the attention and the fame. And, then, and so it's like, well, if I have the gifts and the attention and the look, why am I not receiving it? Well, it's like, well, do you truly value yourself? Do you truly value your security? Have you done what you needed to do to secure the possessions you need in order to feel safe in this life? Um, because we see that where you're used to crisis, turmoil, things breaking down, being restricted in your finances and you're not here to be restricted in your finances you're not here to have a lack of self-worth you're not here to be fueled by others in regards to your worthiness these are things karmically that you need to um, learn achieve and appoint and once you do that the possibilities are endless with the north node as the north node in the second house wants to give you these material possessions it wants to give you worth and value but not without the hard work and once that is achieved a sense of detachment community etc will then be imbued once this is corrected and i can go back to my original chart and unlock it and understand more so what my path is. See this Libra signature here. Um, so I hope I didn't lose you guys in translation. I really pray that this is a technique that you can use to your advantage. If you'd like to book a reading with me and we can help decode your rising sign and its house to see where some of your karmic blocks are and to retrieve some of those keys to unlocking your destiny, feel free to book with me. I'll leave the links below. Until then, I hope you stay blessed. <laughs> God bless you and I'll talk to you soon. Later.